Okay, Liz Truss, the Prime Minister. She became Prime Minister. I'm sure we all remember that wonderful moment. A new Margaret Thatcher for our times. It was going to smash away the the, 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 the Labour Party and, and, and she's going to transform Britain and unleash entrepreneurial spirit and all the rest of it. So she introduced, as we know, a mini budget, which has slashed taxes on the rich, which then caused a crash in the economy. Now, you might expect Liz Truss and Crazy Kwartang, her chancellor, the architects of this catastrophe, to maybe in a moment of crisis, which they caused entirely by themselves, to try and address the public and the nation, maybe do something Rooseveltian. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Some other cliche. I don't know. It's up to them. They've got speech writers. But they just vanished. They just whoo, disappeared entirely from their murder scene. Now, that's not entirely what happened because Liz Truss did agree to do a round, a media round of local BBC outlets. Now, some were very disparaging about this, very snotty, very snobbish. And the reason they were is they were like, well, these are just local journos. Oh, big mistake big mistake. You see, the difference is with these local presenters and the lobby journalists, lobby journalists, the national political journalists, they're too close to power. They spend a lot of time with powerful politicians. They socialize with them. They fraternize with them on a regular basis. And, you know, also they depend on access because, you know, if they say the wrong thing, if they're maybe too aggressive, as far as the government are concerned, they just get frozen out. Not the case for local radio presenters. If they get an interview with the Prime Minister, that's a rare event. They don't need to constantly have these back and forth with their spin doctors. So Liz Truss, having vanished, decided to do this media round. I have no idea which clips I'm going to play now. I don't know which is which. I just put four in. So we're going to find out. This is a lucky dip. Everyone ready? The Liz Truss local media roundup. Lucky dip. Which one should we start with? Let's start with this one. Can you guarantee to my listeners this morning that their pensions are safe? Well, the Bank of England does a very, very good job on delivering financial stability. That, and that that, that's is exactly not an answer, Prime Minister. Can you guarantee yesterday. the people's pensions but I want are safe? To, well, the Bank of England do that and they do a very good job of it. But I just wanted to answer the previous point you were making. <laughs> <laughs> the pause the pause when she was asked can you guarantee people's pensions <laughs> she's the prime minister can you guarantee people's pensions she just didn't say anything she just, there was a pause there was silence now as well as the fact that I think quite a lot of people are probably quite worried about their pensions I think the Conservative Party are entirely dependent, certainly for their polling base, on the votes of pensioners. Like, the over 65s is what their support, is what's consistently delivered the Conservative Party their victories since 2010. And now the Conservative Prime Minister cannot even guarantee if their pensions are safe. That's what she just did. That was literally what she just said. And the fact is, pension funds were on the verge of going bankrupt. Nearly a layman's brother's moment for pension funds until the Bank of England stepped in. So she's just passing the ball. She's just, instead of being able to guarantee pensions, she's just saying, Bank of England's doing a good job. Goodness grief. Next. Oh, it's also about how we grow the size of the pie so that everyone can benefit. By borrowing more and putting our mortgages up. We need to borrow more this winter for the energy crisis that we're facing. And we're I think that was the right more thing in mortgage. to do. We're going to, is... we're going to put, spend more in mortgage fees under what you've done based on the predictions than we would have saved with energy. I don't think anybody is arguing that we shouldn't have acted on energy, which is... <laughs> It's the pause again, isn't it? It's just the pause, just the pause of death. I'm going to call it Liz Truss's pause of death and doom. Um, the point there, the very critical point they're made, is 
they claimed obviously because what would the end with the you know the tax cuts and all the rest of it, you know that was going to hand someone on a million pounds over fifty thousand pounds extra, someone on middle income about two hundred quid, but even with their energy bills being you know they're still significantly higher even after the government intervened than they were say last year. So what's happening now with interest rates, for example, and the general cost of living? because the cost of imports are going to get more expensive because of the pound depreciating, is those people are going to be hammered even more. She doesn't have an answer to that. She doesn't have an answer to that. That's why she paused. But that's the reality of what her economic policies are going to do. Because rising interest rates and the crisis of the pound, the inflationary pressures that she's now accelerating, are going to devastate people on middle and low incomes, even people who are relatively well off not the super rich, because they've always got the Conservative Party to look after them. Let's go for this one. This is a longer one, but let's do it. Let's talk about local consent right now. What does that look like? Scott Benton, the Conservative MP for Blackpool South, in a tweet says he believes that people in Blackpool South do not support fracking. This is the Tory MP for Fylde. Mark Menzies in the House of Commons. If the Prime Minister is to remain a woman of her word, a woman that we can believe in, which I believe she is, can the Secretary of State outline how that local consent will be given and demonstrated in my constituency of fire? What does local consent look like, Prime Minister? Well, I, the, the, the Energy Secretary will be laying out uh, in more detail exactly what that looks like, but it does me mean making sure there is local support for for going ahead and it, i can it, it assure it sounds you, like you don't I can know assure, and i can assure mark menzies well there are there are various detailed issues to be worked through but i can assure mark menzies that i will make sure there is local consent if we are to go ahead in any particular area with fracking but your local mp's don't want it all conservative in the past the county council have said they didn't want it, yet your government overturned it. The science hasn't changed. Why can't you tell us this morning there won't be a return to fracking in Lancashire? Well, I don't, I don't accept the premise of your question. Uh, Why? It's certainly the case at present. Uh, well, because what I've said is if there is local consent, we will go ahead. We need to explore where there is local consent and where there isn't. And we're still doing that work. Your I don't think we should rule out the whole okay. of Lancashire. You talked about how it's a, a success in other countries, but in America they do it in the middle of nowhere. Do you actually know where Preston New Road is, where they have been fracking? Well, I don't. I I don't think I've been to that site in the past. Shouldn't you? Well, as I've said, we will only go ahead with projects where there is local consent. I'm very, very clear about that. Now, we will make sure that that local consent is in place. And... <laughs> she's the Prime Minister. That's the Prime Minister. She's, your, she's literally in charge of the country. It's not just some random person on the street, which it does sound a bit like I accept. She's the, someone's put in the comments, appearing to be overexcited, overstimulated, unnatural, I mean, question, question mark. I think the implication there is that I'm on drugs. I'm not on drugs, unless you include a 33-point lead for the Conservative, uh, for the Labour Party, beg your pardon, <laughs> and uh, Liz Truss doing the worst interviews ever done by any prime minister in history with local presenters who she thought she destroyed. <laughs> oh, I need a tissue. Um, let's keep rolling, keep rolling, roll the tape. We'll be facing no more than £2,500 for a typical energy bill. We've also taken action to reduce our tax burden and spur yeah, but pr Prime Minister, with projects, respect, that so is we the get same scripted answer you've given going. to every BBC local radio station this morning. You've got the Bank of England stepping in now to try and clean up a mess a government has caused. That has never happened. We have a very, very difficult economic global situation because of the war that Vladimir Putin has perpetrated in Ukraine. 
and countries are under pressure around yeah, but the this world. Isn't, of this isn't Putin. This isn't just about Putin. I mean, your Chancellor on Friday opened up the stable door and spooked the horses so much you could almost see the economy being dragged behind them. This is about Putin and the war in Ukraine. That is why we so are... So the Bank of England's intervention yesterday crisis. was the fault of Vladimir Putin, was it? What I was saying is it's very difficult and stormy times in the international markets. And of course, the Bank of England is independent. It takes the action it needs to take. And it is responsible for interest rates and it is responsible for financial stability. But it... I mean, so there she, she obviously had, she tried to blame Vladimir Putin. She tried to blame Vladimir Putin for the chaos, which she and Crazy Kortang have unleashed on the British economy. As the presenter very ably pointed out there, was it Vladimir Putin who forced the Bank of England to do an emergency intervention in the British economy? I know I'm laughing. I know I'm laughing, but this isn't actually that funny. Because what we have here, is an ideologically deranged government which has decided to turn this country into one giant laboratory with you as lab rats for a policy of class war on behalf of the rich which has now had devastating economic consequences which millions of people aren't even going to feel yet but they will and it's really important as well as much as we laugh at Liz Truss's absurd, woeful, humiliating interviews. And I did say during the leadership election, I could see at least theoretically the appeal of previous Tory leaders, even just on a communications level, did not understand Liz Truss. Utterly bizarre, as far as I'm concerned. Really bizarre. It's easy to place the blame on their two shoulders. But that's not what's happened here. We've had now an experiment in Thatcherism for over four decades, a Thatcherite experiment which has delivered nothing other than insecurity, inequality, and social dislocation. Didn't provide growth. The growth since the Thatcherite experiment has been significantly weaker on average than the growth before it. The 1960s had the highest growth on average of any decade since the war. And that was a time of strong trade unions, workers' rights, nationalization high taxes on big business and the rich. So this Thatcherite experiment, the whole basis of it is shrink the state, give loads of money to rich people, and it will all trickle down. And we've had the longest squeeze in living standards now for generations, for, for centuries, in fact, since records began. And her whole claim, oh, if you cut taxes, then the rich will just go and spend it rather than save it, which is what they do, is itself destroyed that claim by the very fact that the Conservatives did cut corporation tax since they came to power in 2010, and it didn't increase investment. Companies just sat on it. And that's why Rishi Sunak was right. He said that, and I'm not giving him any more credit than that because he also is a right-wing ideologue. He's just not as unhinged as this one. But they cut corporation tax, it didn't increase investment. They're trying to do the same again, and now they're going to have to pay for it by massive cuts in expenditure to try and assuage the markets they've panicked. This cannot go on. There's no mandate for it. No one voted for it. And the idea there's any support in the country for this economic experiment is an offensive joke. So what happens next? Very good question. But this is not sustainable. This government has to be removed. It's a threat, literally, to the lives, the security of millions of people, tens of millions of people. The future of this country, in terms of the impact this could have, is like a nuclear bomb going off in the economy. And I think also the danger is, the danger is, um, and Dominic Cummings has made this point um, on Twitter just now, is that they will try and do stupid things as regards the situation with Russia. Because, you know, what got Margaret Thatcher partly out of the hole, she was in the early, early 1980s, the Falcons War. So they will think, ah, if we kind of cause some sort of ratchet up conflict, all the rest of it. So we need to be very careful. The other is they'll press the culture war button. So I think this is clearly a national catastrophe, which was the consequences of this crazed experiment and a policy of class war on behalf of the rich. So as much as these car crash interviews 
you have to laugh at them to some degree because they're so ridiculous. But they just expose the fact that we have maniacs in charge of the country who have dusted off every piece of right-wing extremist economic policy devised in these shadowy think tanks whose funding is never revealed. And now we're all the victims of it. Can't hold.